Create a consistent look and make it easy for people to identify your brand with a brand style guide. In this video, I'll show you what to include in your brand style guide, how to establish your identity, and how to publish a style guide you can share with your team. We'll cover everything you need to build your own style guide. Now, I've been building online brands since the early 2000s, and everyone recognizes my content no matter where they see it. When you're watching a Servant Master video, reading a blog post, or viewing social media content, you always recognize us. This is the Serve No Master Style Guide. This is a living document. My team and I are always learning, and as we put content on new social media channels, components of this guide change. If you watch some of my videos from a few months ago, I was showing a different version of this guide, and we just did an update before recording this video. The first section is the colors that we use. You need at least three colors for this guide when you're starting out. We built out a slightly larger palette, mostly because of the need to rotate more colors on Instagram. I noticed that people thought different posts were the same content, and we found that adding more colors for rotation eliminated this confusion. While three colors is the absolute bare minimum, Five colors should be your starting point. I'll show you some tools in a moment to help you establish your colors. This is the second page of our guide and it covers our aesthetic. It's easy to say we have a comic book style, but it's much better to show it. This page shows you the types of shading used in my colors for over six years. The starbushed is the most common background design, followed by the dots. Any new member of my team can look at this page and instantly know what fits and doesn't fit with our style. They don't need to spend hours scanning through my blog. It's all explained here in a single page. On top of our different comic book colors and backgrounds are drawings of me that my art team has put together for different campaigns. You can see Matrix Jonathan, Thor Jonathan, Star Wars Samurai Ninja Jonathan. There is a very clear visual language on this single page. This is the page where you show how you like to use your colors. Is it all going to be solid colors? Do you like shading? How will the colors work for you? Depending on your style, you might prefer to use this this page to demonstrate your mood. Fill the page with pictures that you want published on your feeds. For my content, we almost always use drawings and vectors rather than photographs. We never use pictures with words in them. Do you want pictures of adults in an office space or women on a night out? Should the people always be happy or serious? A mood board allows you to express the emotion of your content. The third page of my style guide starts my logo section. I have four variations of my logo. They are for a light or dark background and a square or a rectangle. Sometimes your logo needs to be short and wide, such as in a banner, and sometimes it needs to be more closer to a square, like in the top left corner of the website. We have a page with a bunch of common sense rules for the logo, such as changing colors or rotating the logo. Every time one of my artists does something that we realize doesn't work, we add it to this page as a rule. I didn't even realize that I never rotate the logo until we started working on this page. I'd always just kept it straight. Our next section is fonts. We've played around a lot with fonts over the past few years, and these are the ones that really work for my brand. They are readable, interesting, and like our color palette, they work well together. We may build out this section more and create rules for which fonts can be a heading for which other fonts, but right now, we aren't that restrictive. You'll find that you add more sections to your style guide as you find things that you don't like. We haven't had a lot of font issues, so this is only one page in my current guide. Next, we have a glossary. This is mostly for my staff to use with each other, so they're using the same language. I'm not as knowledgeable on what each of these terms mean, but I do know that when my video editor talks to my social media manager, they're using the same language with each other. This is important as my team comes from many different countries. I'm actually the only native English speaker at Servo Master. Our final section is our social media section. This is the section that's currently changing the most. It's where I notice we are reusing the same colors too frequently and causing confusion with our audience. We've tested a lot on social media and the section, it's not set in stone. These are real posts from Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and YouTube. Here you can see the culmination of everything covered in the style guide before this. If you look closely, you may notice that the subtitles in my videos don't follow the style guide. We played around with that. And the most important thing with subtitles is the readability. When you're reading a blog post, you can read at whatever speed works for you, but when it's subtitles in a video, the moment it's gone, you've lost your chance. We have used really cool looking subtitles in the past, but a shift towards readability is more important here. Any static text still follows our rules. On the final page are images from YouTube. We're trying a lot of different ideas with YouTube thumbnails right now, so as we get better data, this page will change. My video editor and social media manager have really different ideas for the thumbnails, so we're trying both styles to see what works, and then that will become the rule for the future. Now that you've seen my style good, let's start building yours. Your initial version should have five sections, color, aesthetic, logo, fonts, and social media. Let's start with color. Looking at any major blog or brand, you'll notice that there's a consistency to their colors and the colors seem to go together. There are a few ways to go about creating your brand colors. The first way is to pay someone anywhere from $25 to $300 on Fiverr to work with you to develop a palette and other style guide components. While some of these gigs can be useful, I've never had success hiring someone to build an entire style guide from scratch on Fiverr. It's better to just work on the palette first and then develop the rest of your style guide one section at a time. The second way is to find a picture that has the colors you really love in it and upload them to Canva. Their tool will turn any image into a color palette. You can decide what you like and start building out your palette from an idea. This is similar to bringing a chocolate bar to the hardware store and they use the machine to make paint that's exactly the same color. It's pretty cool technology and great when you have a picture that you know you like, but you're not sure why you like it. 
If you already have a logo that you love, you can upload it to Canva's color palette generator. It will use any image you upload to create a color palette. Canva creates four color palettes, and the next tool I'll show you creates five color palettes. This lovely photo of donuts has turned into a palette with hot pink, Tiffany blue, mint, and yellow. This looks delicious. When I upload my current logo for light backgrounds, the palette is Nile Blue, Lavender, and Lucky. This is a really nice palette, and all it took was uploading my logo. It was switched to the version of my logo that I use on dark backgrounds. The main text changes from purple to white. Can gives me an entirely new palette with Eden, Green, White, Lemon, and Verdigris. Can also test previous versions of my logo to see what Canva comes up with. Many years ago, my logo was really blue, and uploading this image to Canva gives me a very blue palette. This is exactly why I prefer to come up with my brand colors before my logo. Something that looks really nice in the corner of your page can become a bit too much when your entire website turns blue. The most recent version of my logo was designed by a better artist than this blue one, and you can see that he used really bold colors. Uploading this version of my logo gives me a palette of Dodger blue, yellow sea black, and antique bronze. If you already have a logo that you love, this tool will help you to pull a great palette from it. You can also just choose the one color you like and use that as the starting color for a palette generator. Cooler has an amazing tool that generates five colors that are always guaranteed to work together. I think it's the easiest way to start building your brand colors. Cooler starts with five colors on the page and you keep hitting the random color generator button until you start to see colors that you like. You can pay to remove the ads, but I don't think it's necessary for a tool that we're only gonna use for less than an hour. The most important information on the page are the hex codes. These are six digit codes that represent each of the more than 16 million possible colors. As long as you save the five hex codes from your palette, you can find them in any other tool. Every time I push the space bar, a new batch of colors is generated. Keep hitting the space bar until you see a color that you like and hit the lock image on that color. With the first color locked in, pushing the space bar generates four new colors that all work together. Now, I will only get palettes that work with the color that I like. Within a few clicks, we already have a palette that's pretty good. The blue, purple, and orange are pretty bold but I really like bold colors. As you lock in more colors, the variations will start to shrink. With three colors locked in, I've moved from millions of possibilities to just a handful. The beauty of this tool is that it handles all the color science for me. I don't have to worry that I'll pick colors that clash or violate some color law. Cooler does that part for me. In less than a minute, I have a new palette of Midnight Green, Eagle Green, Bow Blue, Dark Sienna, Shamrock Green, and Tan Crayola. If you wanna start over from scratch, reload the page. You'll get a fresh palette to start from. Cooler has some other cool features. I can click on the icon with the little squares and it turns this color into a giant list of shades to choose from. If you find a color that's really close to what you want, but not quite there, then look at the shades to find what you want. I can select this green shade, lock it in, and start generating palettes that work with it. Or I can fresh completely to get a new palette. I like this one too. The beauty of this tool is that whatever palette you come up with, the colors will work together. There's no risk of you creating a bad palette. If these two tools are helping take away a lot of your stress about coming up with brand colors, please hit the like button. I wish I'd known about them when I started my business. And the more people who hit the like button, the more people who will see this video. And that means we can help to make the internet a little bit more more beautiful. The colors used in your branding palette should be more than just colors you like. There's another science all about how colors are tied to emotion. Different colors have different meanings and symbolism. Red is a very active and passionate color. It's the color of love and desire and war. Turquoise is at the other end of the spectrum and it's very calm and a peaceful color. I'll post a link to a good blog post with 12 colors and their emotional meanings in the description. As you're building out your palette, you want to create colors that you like, colors that go together, the colors that evoke the correct meanings, and colors that make sense in your market. Of the three methods, I think using Cooler is probably the best way to come up with a color scheme for your business. Once you have your starting colors, you're ready to move on to the next page of your style guide. Aesthetic. When describing my style to a designer, I initially said pop art in a 1940s Dick Tracy comic book style, and even included some images I found of Dick Tracy in this style. It wasn't perfect, but it was enough to get my artist started. It's much easier to just show you a picture of a style that I like than to describe it. I found the aesthetic that I like rather than creating it. During one of my website redesigns, the woman helping me showed me this comic book style as an alternative to the clean look I wanted. She found something I'd liked more than I realized it. I was already using many images in the style on my website, but she really sewed it up together. It's okay to discover your brand style after you've been in business for a while. We built a Serve No Master style guide the hard way. I had tons of blog posts and product images and other content that I created. I put it all in front of my social media manager and said, just don't listen to a style guide. What kinds of colors and shapes do you like? Do you like pastels or do you hate them? Do you use photos or drawings? Do you like showing faces in your content? You probably already have strong feelings on at least some of these ideas and you can make this a collection of images that inspire you or match what you like. This page is where you get to express yourself. Do you want smiles or serious looks? Is your brand about business or family? If you have no idea, got you covered. This is 123RF. It's the main site where I get all of my stock photos and a great place to find some inspiration. I found most of the aesthetic for my brand here. I was playing around with different search terms and when I typed in pop art, started to see some images that I really like. A lot of my stock photos all come from this one artist. All I do is scroll through the page, parting the images that I like and passing over the ones that I don't. You can see a lot of the imagery that has made its way into my style guide, such as bold background colors with dots in the background. This one has no lines. I would never use this image, but I would use this one. A lot of that comes from how many images we've used over the years. I 
can look and know if I like or don't like an image very quickly. I would never use this image because it has words on it. If I really wanted to use one of these images, I'll have to remove the words. Some of these images won't work for me because they are too casual. Even though I use a comic book style, I want to maintain a certain level of business feel. This image is too emotional. The Superman style image is similar to others that we've used. This image is okay, but this one is a bit too much, my bread. I would never use an image like this. I know that the artist creates variations of each image like this one. is an image where the woman is choking the man, where the woman is choking a robot, where a robot is choking an astronaut, and tons more. I don't use images that have any sense of violence, and it really wouldn't make sense. What does an image like this have to do with starting a blog or choosing a color palette? I also avoid images where the people are too attractive. That's the main reason I use drawings instead of photographs. I don't want my audience to be too distracted by a picture. The picture is meant to support my content, and that's the show. There are some artists in the style that I love, and some that I don't really connect with. Let's try finding some inspiration from scratch. Go into the photo section of the website. I can click on any of these category terms to start looking for inspiration. Or let's type New York into the search bar and see what happens. We have images that are blue or gray or orange. These are all images of the same city, but they look so different and have such a different feel. Some of these images feel very claustrophobic to me, so I don't want them as part of my brand. There are no wrong answers in this process. Just click the heart on any image that speaks to you. You can always remove images once you have a bunch that you like. We could try different search terms and get tons of new photos to play with. Do you want people laughing as part of your brand identity? Which of these pictures do you like? Are some of these pictures too cheesy? I only use vectors, which means non photographed for most of my designs. Let's try this process in that section. I can click on any of these terms to start finding my style. This process works even if you have no idea what you like or what you want your style to be. This is how we find it. When I click on sun, I immediately see suns that I like and suns that I would never use in my brand. Some of these suns I like, but don't fit what I think my brand should look like. Going back to the main page, let's click on people and see what we like. I personally like images where the people are interacting with each other more than ones that just look like a collection of photo IDs. The masks create negative emotions for me. The people don't look happy and feel disconnected from each other. This to me is too artificial. This one I like because it feels like the man in the front is going to turn into a superhero or something. I don't like the tone of this image. I feel like they laid a brown filter over the entire image, so it feels like I'm looking through a dust cloud. I prefer vibrant colors to muted tones. I respond more to images where the characters are interacting with each other, but that's just me. You might like the images that I don't, and that's great. I really like the ballet picture. The colors are vibrant and there's a strong sense of movement and the characters feel like they're dancing together. I'm not sure why, but this family looks strange to me. Anytime there's a part of an image that seems strange to you, but you can't figure out why, it's best to just move on. You could spend hours trying to figure out what caused the initial feeling, but there's no point. You have good instincts. I guess this is a group of detectives and scrolling through the images, strolling through, you're going to see images you like and don't like. And then some images are going to really pop for you. This image is exactly my style and we found it without even looking for it. The work of this artist is the inspiration for all the customs of drawings and that you see throughout my content. Let's try one more category. Let's look at romance. What do you like and what do you not like on this page? I like this a lot. I think this is really great. And I really like this style too. I've used some artwork in the style before on a previous project. I love how it looks like the image is made from construction paper. I have no idea how they create that effect. I just know that I like it. I like this image of two birds on a branch in the same style. I could see using a lot of this paper style art to create a new brand. Here's a man and a woman in a pop art style that I don't like. For some reason, this image, which you probably expected me like, isn't working for me. Here's another of these paper images. They must be really popular style for romance imagery. It keeps coming up on this page. This is a great method for figuring out what you like and starting to create your brand aesthetic. There are no right and wrong answers. Find colors and shapes that you like. Creating a collage is much easier than writing a list of brand rules. This is a much faster process than trying to design an aesthetic from scratch. While I've put the steps of this process into my preferred order, please remember that your style guide is a living document. You can go back and rework the color palette after you find a bunch of images that inspire you. Each of your style guide pages is connected, so it makes sense to keep looping through them and modifying the pages as you develop the style you want. Once you have your aesthetic page complete, we're ready for the big one. Most people like to start with creating their dream logo, but it's much easier to start with colors and aesthetic that you like. Logo. Everyone will have an opinion about your logo. No matter what you do, you're going to have people who love and hate it. New logos and brand colors are like the chicken and the egg. You can create them in either order. You can hire a designer to create a logo and hopefully they will come up with the colors that you like or you create your colors first using Cooler or other software and then come to your logo designer with some guidelines on what you do and do not like. My current logo is nothing like my original logo. The design, font, and colors have changed a lot. Each artist comes with a fresh approach and I either love it or hate it. I created my logo first and only after I had found my brand palette and aesthetic did we get to the logo that I use now. This is the very first iteration of my logo. Let's not avoid the elephant in the room. This logo is really green. This logo is a fine starting point, but nowhere near as good as the logo that I'm using these days. This logo was designed with no colors or aesthetic. The only instructions I gave were the three main ideas, a man breaking his chains, the ghostbuster no image, and the three words below the main logo, author, entrepreneur, unchanged. That's probably why the logo feels a little off. I think it's too busy and way too much green. There isn't enough of a color palette to actually work with. The next iteration of my logo shifted from greens to blues and added in some orange as well. We have three colors in this logo finally, and this is a big 
big improvement, but it feels like a logo without a home. It's not connected to any of those style elements of my branding. Also, please notice that it's okay to change your logo. Just like everything else in your brand style guide, you can change things as your opinions change and your desires evolve. This is the third and most expensive version of my logo. I brought in an artist to create this and he did not disappoint. This is the first logo that came after working on my brand aesthetic. During the redesign of my website that I mentioned when talking about the aesthetic, the designer suggested a new logo. She came up with the foundational brand colors and the artwork style. That made it easy for the artist to come up with a logo that blows the previous iterations out of the water. The fourth and current version of my logo is simply a more 3D version of the previous logo. I'm not entirely sure that this version of the logo is better than the previous version, I think both are really good. Every once in a while, I hire a logo designer to come up with a new version of the logo to see if they can beat these two. So far, these are still my two favorites. There are a few ways to create your own logo. The more ideas you have before you hire a logo designer, the more likely you are to get what you want. If you know the emotions, colors, and aesthetic you want, you'll get a great logo. You can go back to 123RF and search for the word logo. You'll see a ton of logos you can use for inspiration. This stock photo site is an amazing resource that you can use for way more than just blog background photos. Searching for logos, I end up with some really interesting designs and you can see what you like and don't like. This is a much better way to look for logo ideas than modeling big brands because everything here is licensed. It's a stock photo site, so you can use anything. Do you want a mascot on your logo? Do you want text or just an image? Do you want the image and text to be merged like my logo or two separate identities? Do you want an Apple on your logo? Once you see things you like, just add them to your search term. Let's look at Apple logos. Obviously we can't use this logo, but there are some other cool ideas here. Even though there's already a well-known brand with an Apple in their logo, there are a ton of great ideas here. Staying with our organic theme, let's look at tree logos. There is more inspiration here than you could ever look at. There are 1,709 pages of tree logos. There are a lot of logos buried in the stock photo site and most people never think to look for them. This is a little secret resource that I love. You may not want to use the logo exactly as designed here because this is a stock photo site and someone else can download the same logo. You do have the option to purchase exclusivity for a logo by calling 123RF, but that's a lot of unnecessary work. Use these logos as inspiration as you create your own logo. You want something completely unique that was designed just for you. Looking at blog logos, I see a few ideas such as this nerd image. It reminds me of a few blogs that I follow. I think blog is too generic. Let's try business. This is good because these are designs that are meant to feel more corporate. I really like this excavator logo. Some of these logos are just built around one letter. That gives me an idea. Let's look at some S logos for serve no master. Maybe an S with a line through it. Could be something cool to play around with as the icon version of my logo, like if I put out an app. This page is loaded up with really cool ideas and there are additional 682 pages of S logos. That's thousands of logos to look at for inspiration. Once you have inspiration for your logo, you should hire a designer to create the final logo. I'll post links to a few of the places I've hired logo designers in the past. You can get an amazing logo for less than $30 and that's what I suggest for your first logo. While it's tempting to chase that perfect initial logo and you can spend thousands of dollars doing it, it's not really a good expense. The odds that you change your first logo, no matter how much you initially love it, are quite high. So it's better to save your money from when you change your logo in a year. To get started, you can download a few of the logos that you like for inspiration and put them into your style guide. You're going to change this page once you have your first logo, but putting your inspiration down on paper is the goal. Anyone who picks up your style guide will know what you like and don't like, even with a temporary logo in place. If you're finding this video helpful, please hit the thumbs up button. It might not seem like a lot, but it really helps me to know which of my videos you find useful. The videos that get the most likes are how I decide what content to create next. Your feedback guides the channel. Fonts. Our next step is to come up with the fonts that represent our brand. Your font may or may not end up in your final logo, so this process will be different for everyone. I now use the same font in my logo and headlines, but it wasn't always the case. Your logo can always be the exception to everything else happening on your page, so don't feel like your logo font will control the rest of your fonts. I came up with my fonts in the absolute hardest way possible. I went to a font website and looked at thousands of fonts until I found one that I liked. That became my headline font. I found the company that created that font and looked at all of their other fonts to find my secondary fonts. As much as my social media and banner images use these fonts, they are not the fonts I use for my blog posts. When it's content that someone might spend hours reading, I stick to readability over creativity. I played around with changing the fonts around my website. They were a little bit too hard to read. I created my fonts the hard way. Please let me show you a much easier way. This is Font Joy. It does to fonts what Cooler does to colors. You can hit Generate to come up with new font sets, and as you see a font you like, you lock it in. There are three main fonts to choose, headline, subheadline, and paragraph. 90% of your text will be in paragraphs, such as the text of all your blog posts. So this is the font that needs to be the easiest to read. Your headline is where you can be the most creative, and the subheadline falls in the middle. There's a bar at the top of the page where you can choose if you want your fonts to be really similar to each other or really different. I find that I get the best results right in the middle of the slider. Let's hit generate and see what happens. Don't expect to like the very first font you see. I certainly don't. I like this middle font, so I'm gonna lock it in. Meriwether for the paragraph font is pretty good. With two of my three fonts locked in, now I'm just looking for that perfect headline. With the slider set to be really different, I'm getting some crazy fonts here. They are too different, so let's try toning it down. Some of these fonts are just too hard to read. We'll keep generating until we find something that you like. This set is pretty good to me. 
tree wrong, so I hate ya and Meriwether. There's one limitation with this tool. It only uses official Google fonts. This is actually a good thing as these are the fonts that load the fastest. When you use a unique font, visitors to your website have to download that font before it displays correctly. Google fonts will help your website to load faster. There's a school of thought that says my fonts are too crazy and too hard to read. Mostly you'll see me use them in social media images, but not in the actual text of my blog. I want my website to load as fast as possible and be really easy to read. Social media. This is where your personal branding is going to change the most. For your first iteration of your style guide, find social media posts by other brands that you like and don't like. This will be your initial guidance for your team. Basically, you're saying to be like the posts you like and not like the posts you don't like. Over time, you'll create posts that you really like and you're gonna use those in your guide. And you'll create social media content you really hate and you'll add those to your don't do this page. Some of our rules are in the social media posting guides instead of here. For example, we post three clips from the same video each week on Instagram. We were using the same headline and colors for the borders and only rotating them for each new series. This led to people thinking it was the same video because I was wearing the same clothes. I'm in a different pose, but that's not enough to differentiate each video. There are so many sources of inspiration for social media that it could be an entire video on its own. We use Canva for all of our social media content. I have two massive accounts for my two brands and as much as I spent years resisting, the tool really is the best. Start your content using their templates and over time, you'll start to create your own style. Bonus section, style guide inspiration. In the description, you can find a link to style guides. It's a website that has tons of style guides that you can use as inspiration. There's no reason to start from scratch and you might find the one that you like to model. I love looking at other brand style guides to find inspiration myself. This is the Systemology Style Guide. They're a company from Australia, and I think that their style guide is quite good. It's really different to my guide and three times as long. That's how you know they're a bigger company. Their mood board gives you a sense of the colors and emotions that they like. Everything should have a sense of order and grids and lines. Their logo needs to always have a specific amount of empty space around it. The logo can never be smaller than this size. They have a square and circular version of the logo. The logo has a lot of rules, such as the holiday version of the logo. The logo should only be on white or light gray background. If there's a different color background, you have to use a solid black or white version of the logo. We can see how the logo is used with photo backgrounds to reinforce their color rules. Notice how the white logo on the laptop image, it's hard to read. That's against the rules. How do you want your company name spelled? I always capitalize the SNM and serve nomaster.com. Do not write the company name in all uppercase, lowercase, title case, or sentence case. Some of these rules apply to my brand. We just haven't needed to codify them yet. Nobody has ever tried to locate my logo, so this one hasn't come up for us. Some of these seem common sense to me. Don't stretch the logo, don't change the colors. I guarantee you that someone on their team created a logo with this different color blue and tried to publish it somewhere. This is already in an earlier rule, but they had to put it in again. That's how our style guide will grow. Here we see that someone forgot the empty space rule and put a button too close to the logo. So we need to add a second reminder here. These rules aren't here because the company owner is a maniac. These all got added as people came with ideas that didn't look good. This is why style guides grow as your company grows. This font section is a lot more detailed than mine. These font rules are really strict and it makes sense because it makes it really easy for a worker to check if they're using the right size text. This eliminates the need to check in with your manager to see if you're using the right font. They display their color palette in a really cool way with the most important colors the largest. You can also see the shades that you're allowed to use of each color at 20% increments. They have a much more limited color palette and you can see it in their social media pages. They use these exact colors, but all the posts look really clean and nice. They also have some really specific rules about where people can be and what images can look like, what technology should look like, the types of photos they like and the ones they think look cheap. Cheesy. A new employee might not know what a seasoned employee thinks of as cheesy, so these examples really help. The final section is more rules about black and blue color overlays. Coloration is really important to them. The rules about where to place the man's image and not make it the same color as the background seem really logical to me. It's interesting that he's always to be in black and white. That's a cool rule to put in your style guide. There are more sections about how they like to lay out pages and column widths, where you can put sections on your pages. I haven't needed to make my style guide this deep yet, but I could eventually get there. This is how far a style guide can go. And in case it felt a little overwhelming, that's why I started with the five main sections so that it's manageable. I want you to succeed in creating your style guide. You can download the current active version of my style guide at johnlinks.com forward slash style guide. I'm updating it all the time, so it'll probably look different to this video. Just click the link in the description. Is there a part of this video where I could have gone deeper? Would you like an entire video on color theory or font science? Let me know in the comments. I'm always looking for inspiration for my next video. Thank you so much for watching my video. I've always got more content for you. So check out this one or maybe even this one.